Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Journey Through the Generations. And today is the recap of Relative Race, day nine. It's hard to believe there's only one episode left. And tonight's episode was the last day for them to meet a relative. And it was a really good episode. Was, I, I think this I was, was probably sitting, my favorite episode. I know I was of the sitting season. on the edge of my seat for real. Yeah, I was sitting there nervous like I was <laughs> in the competition. So, you know. Yes. I mean, but from the beginning to the challenge to the end, and it was just they outdid themselves. Yeah, that was. That was really good, uh, a really good episode. So let's go ahead and get into the recap. Um, we got quite a few things to, to talk about. Um, so as they do every episode, it was, you know, a recap of the day before and um, people getting gifts from their family. Team Red um, on the last episode met um, Liz met her sister and her sister gave her um, a sister bracelet. And she also gave the, gave her a photo of all four of the siblings um, because she has met three of her siblings on her biological father's side. So that, that was a really good gift. Let's talk about Team Blue because they um, were... Uh, who did they meet last week? Their aunt. Their aunt. I forget what the name. Yeah, of they one. met their aunt, and so they were out. Bobby, I think. I think that's right. They were out because um, you know they're in Florida, so they were out somewhere looking at the ocean, um, getting prepared for the day, and then they got their text from Dan, but they weren't anywhere close to the house, and they weren't packed. It, and that's baffling to me. After, I know that's after like something nine, you do at first day one or yeah, two. Yeah, after nine days, you can't you can't say, "Oh, I thought the text was gonna come," you know, a little bit later. We had more time. <laughs> no, sir, you can't do that. Not this on day nine. Day nine, you got to wake up, and the first thing you do after you brush your teeth is, is get pack your the car. bags ready and. Just get Just ready, wait be by ready the car. to go. Yes. Especially when you have two strikes. You yes. can't afford to lose any time. Yes, because I don't know if we mentioned, but all four teams have two strikes. And this is actually because I you know, I said I was gonna do my homework last week and look at all of the episodes. Um day nine episodes from the previous season. And this is the actual very first time that all four teams have made it to day nine. Yeah, I figured as as such. And because it's so hard to do. Um, but I'm excited about that because I'm glad that we're going to have three teams, um, go off to day 10 and, you know, do the challenge mm-hmm. to win yeah. $50,000. It just makes it better to watch, I mm-hmm. think, yeah. to have three teams instead of just two. Yeah. Not to mention that every team got to meet all nine relatives. Yeah. And that's the, you know, the best part of it all. Um, but yeah, meeting your family, um, is the important thing and uh everybody got a chance to to meet their family members mm-hmm. plus more some, some at some stage right, they yeah. met mm-hmm. more than, more just, one than person. just one person so that's awesome so yeah the start of the day um was other than that was typical for everyone else because tim green they always have their maps out ready to go and, and today was no different um only thing is that team red had a problem getting out of their parking spot yeah, when they got their text from Dan, and as you know, if you watch day eight last week, that they had a problem finding their relative mm-hmm. because they were in downtown Philadelphia and it was hard to navigate. And if you spent any time in a big city, um, downtown areas, you would know that uh, you would know that there's a lot of streets there's a right. lot of one way one way streets. streets alleys alleyways and there's people parking on the street and big trucks trying to navigate those streets and so they struggled and which is how they got into last place last week right but um but i was like okay i really hope they can prepare they have time to prepare mm-hmm. and it'll help them get out of the downtown area quicker and somebody parked too close behind them yeah, and they were, in front of them. Yeah, they were parallel parked right in front of um the house or whatever and they the 
car in front of them and the car behind them was too close. So it took them an extra long time to be able to maneuver the car out. Yeah, I think it probably took them 12 to 15 times I'm to sure go they back and show forth it on yes. that. Because that, even though it's a small car, I was gonna they say, didn't you, have all If you watch the space. show, you know that they, sh- they all drive a small car. But still, they... Yeah, it was awful looking at it. I was just like, time is going. Yeah, that's crazy. And then the uh, one thing I want to call out is we learned that, at least I learned, maybe they've said it before, but Team Black is wanting to adopt. Mm, And so they are really working hard to get this $50,000, which will go a a long long way. way for them to be able to adopt. Mm -hmm. So So, yeah, I thought that was Mm -hmm. really cool. And um, Dan also told the teams what the first place prize would be for today. Um, For whoever comes in first place, they will win two airline tickets to see the relative of their choice after the race. All right. So everybody got their text from from Dan and they got what city they were going to. Um, So everybody got on the road and started going. So, Trisha, what was everybody's drive drive times for the day? Um, Today's drive time was Team Green had one hour and six minute drive time. Um, Team Red had a one hour and 29 minute drive time. Team Blue had a one hour and 36 minute drive time. And Team Black had the longest drive of two hours and 19 minutes. Yeah, so not a long time. Everybody was pretty, pretty short. Not mm-hmm. nothing too bad. No. So yeah, so everybody, you know, got their times and was ready to go, and everybody seemed to get out okay, with the exception of Team Red, like we just mentioned, <laughs> yeah. having to go back and forth in a parking spot. Um, but they finally got out and they got going to their to their cities. Yeah, time to take their city selfie. And it seemed like everybody navigated. Um, to the actual freeway highway very well with no problems or anything like that that they showed so yeah and there really wasn't any traffic issues Mm-mm. you know that no weather issues or anything like that i didn't at least no, that they just, showed us I, it seemed really smooth yeah it seemed like everything went well even finding their city signs seemed to not frazzle them the way it can some t- some days well I don't know. I mean, I think the pressure of the day, people was getting a little testy. You know, it wasn't like a all out, you know, fighting, but like, you know, Team Black was feeling it a little bit. Team Red, you know, you know, I think that everybody was just trying to keep the other person calm right? and just, okay, we're good. We're going to get to the city. We're going to take a picture. And so I think that's, you know, kind of... It was a lot of take a deep breath moments. Yeah, for sure. So everybody found uh, a sign to take their city selfie. Again, there's no issues um, with that anymore. So no big deal there. Um, And then, of course, everybody got their address for the challenge. Yes. And today's challenge was... Dodging divers. Right. And so the the premise of this challenge is to get a fish bowl that full has a full of water that has a toy fish in it. Mm-hmm. You had to carry it across a little bit of an obstacle course, I right. would call it, to the other side. And you, where there's another fish bowl, you can transfer the fish to... All the while, one of the contestants had on blackout goggles. And both contestants had on um, swim flippers and shoes. And they had to, this obstacle course that they had to navigate meant sometimes you had to um, raise your leg and get over an oar or squat and go under the oar. Mm -hmm. I think there was a set of four, too low and too high. I'm not sure. But wearing, you know... Fem slippers, that's kind of awkward. Yeah. And if you remember from last week, um, Team Green got a benefit. Oh, yes, for, that's true. For this challenge. And because their they benefit won. Mm-hmm. was to remove one of the obstacles from the course, which made it easier for them to navigate. And it did help it them. It helped them because they, they removed one of the lower 
oars. So that meant that they didn't have to step over it. Yep. They, because, they just had to go yeah, under. Because they were the way they were on there, your um, fin slipper could just knock it over if you hit it the wrong way. Right. And so, um, so yeah, they got that benefit. And this is why everybody needs to be winning these challenges because especially as they get closer to the end, they get, they get better and they get, Mm -hmm. you know, the benefit is, is better. You You never know. Mm -hmm. You never know what it's going to be. So every benefit could, obviously be a benefit that's why they call it that yeah i mean getting the benefit of taking one obstacle down you know on day nine versus a five minute you know stop somebody penalty you know that's that's nothing compared to being able to take an obstacle uh part out of the out of the challenge right so um, but I thought that everybody did, you know, pretty good. The and let's talk about Team Blue. Let's. I felt so bad for them when I say I was on the edge of my seat yep. watching them go through that because um, Anthony has cerebral palsy. Yeah, and, that and was he has hard motor to watch. Um, issues and and things like that. So it was hard for it was extra hard for him to be able to lift his leg up to get it over the oar anyway and then he had to lift it up even higher because he had those um thin things on so it was just but they when I say they did a great job and they you know were just always positive and wanted to um get it done which they did because they had to do three times so I just thought that you know they did really good yeah they pushed through and you know, I'm really glad that they did because, you know, you could tell that they were, you know, hesitant. Like, can I do this? Mm-hmm. You know, and so uh, I'm glad they did it and was able to push through and did the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, they finished it. Yeah. And um, and uh, I remember saying to you, it's like if they get last place, their last strike, it's going to be because of that challenge. Yeah. Because it, you know, it obviously it took them, took them yeah. longer. Um, because Anthony, it's Anthony, right? Right. I yeah. still don't know them boys. Anthony, um, <laughs> Anthony you know, he, even though he did it, it takes him a long a time, time yeah. to do it. And so, um, I'm betting, I'm, I bet you anything. <laughs> I bet you anything. The people on Facebook, gonna, or the fans gonna of Relative Race, that. they're going to be saying, oh, that's not fair because they like the blue team. Everybody loves the blue yeah, team. And, which is fine. They're good good guys and yeah, all that they stuff. they grew on me too. But I t- I'm telling you, watch what I say. If if you see that in the fans of Relative Race <laughs> Facebook page, uh, t- uh, go to our Facebook page on Journey Through the Generations and and tell me because I guarantee you somebody's going to say it. I'm so, sure they will. Anyway, I'm not spending time with them. They anyway. So yeah, they they made it through the challenge. So I was really proud of mm-hmm. them for uh, doing that. And they only dropped their fish one time. One time, yeah. Yeah, because if you dropped your fish, you had to go back and start to all the over. beginning and start all over. And so that means they went through that thing four times. Four times, yeah. Yeah. So. But um, so everybody got done with the challenge and they got their um, address to their relative house and Team Black found um, a police officer and asked for directions. And they seem to have gotten maybe half of the directions. Yeah, it didn't seem to help them at all. So she got in the car and said that I have directions, but he said it's going to get dicey towards the middle. And we might have to stop and ask again. So, yeah, we talked about this very thing. Oh, man, I don't know what episode it was, but it was towards the beginning, Mm -hmm. maybe three or four or something like that. But (laughs) police officers don't know every single street and address in the their respective towns. And I they just don't. I will say I would have thought that they did also. Um, but you're absolutely right, because it seems like the more they ask police officers, the less information they're able to get. Yeah, that, I mean, and then you have to understand that police officers spend uh, all of their shift in certain areas right. in, of the city. Yeah. They don't and just so, drive around. Like, right, they just don't male, drive around the whole city. Like male people. Yeah, I mean, they're assigned to, I don't know if you want to call them zones or 
precincts or, or whatever, whatever you want to call them. But so they would know that area very right. well, but they may not know another part of town that well. So, I mean, you know, especially if it's not off of a major street. So, I mean, it's it's a it's a chance you're taking with talking to a police officer and uh and it just didn't work out for Team Black this time. Right. And Team Red um, got stuck behind the 18-wheeler that was in the <laughs> middle of traffic. Exactly what I'm talking about. And, I mean, these are the kind of stories when you tell people, they're like, it was not an 18-wheeler just stuck in the middle of traffic in, like, a neighborhood area for that long. But it was. Yeah. And that's what I was saying earlier is, like, those big trucks have to get in there and to deliver products and goods and food or whatever yeah, they have to maneuver and trucks they maneuver those things all the time mm-hmm. so and sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not yeah yeah i know i remember being oh i think we were either in new york or in chicago and we were downtown and yeah, i think it was chicago and i just saw all these big trucks downtown mm-hmm. you know backing up into <laughs> streets had the whole street yeah. blocked and I don't know, man. You, you, that's just the way it is. It is. And they just had bad luck that their relative lives downtown. Down, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Team Black, they struggled a little bit. They were a little frustrated in the car. They had some traffic issues once they actually got on the right way to get to their relative's house. They got stuck in some traffic, um, which led to frustrations and them going back and forth with each other. Um I hadn't seen them go back and forth with each other since earlier in the season. So they must have really been um, stuck in traffic longer than it was edited. Well, for. I just found it odd that Casey was the one trying to calm Sean down. It's usually the other and, way around. And and he was getting frustrated, which understandable. Right. Pressure of the game. Mm-hmm. Day nine, two strikes. And Casey kept telling him to stop. And... <laughs> He told her, telling me stop doesn't help. It just makes it worse. And I know for you, Trisha, if I did that same thing to you, you would say, <laughs> don't tell me that. And then I would stop. I wouldn't do it anymore because I don't want you going off on me. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Nobody I mean, believes that. But but that's because they don't know you okay, like I do. We're talking about relative race. But. Casey was she just she, kept on but she did it again after he said don't tell me stop. <laughs> and he would look at her like then we just had this discussion yeah so that was crazy that was that that was funny yeah. um and other, other teams had trouble navigating too yeah they did um team blue seemed to get off on a great great stride and then they once they got into the neighborhood of where they were going they got turned around um and then they had to you know, maneuver against that and turn back around and go all the way to the other end of the street. Um, but so it seemed like everybody had a little bit of issues after the challenge getting to the relative's house. Yeah. So, so of course, everybody finally made it to their relative's mm-hmm. house. And uh, we'll talk about who each team met and we'll uh, talk about these in the order that it happened on the show. So uh, Team Red. Um, they pulled up and <laughs> their, all of their people were sitting outside in front right, of the garage, yeah. probably hanging out, got music playing. <laughs> they were playing dominoes too. Or no, spades. they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. No, I made that up. I, no, I said that, but oh. I was just joking. <laughs> I thought um, that was for real because they got it from tables. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they met. So Devin met his biological mom's cousins or his cousins on his biological mom's side right yeah uh so he met two of his cousins a a brother and a sister yes i don't remember their name i didn't write it down i didn't write their names down either um but Devin's grandmother and the cousin's great-grandmother were sisters and so that's how they are related so yeah Devin had a chance to you know sit down and talk uh to his cousins and just figure out where he fits um, in the tree. And of course, it, it got him emotional because he was talking about his mom who passed away, you know, five years ago. And to that day was, 
you know, almost five years to the date mm-hmm. and they were planning on doing something for for that. But um, but him getting more information about his family, um, it just kind of made him emotional with the upcoming anniversary of her death. Right. Yeah. So Team Green, who did they meet? Um, Monica was able to meet her um, aunt Shelly who is her mother's sister. And when she met her and told her who she was, Michael was like, well, why didn't she say she had a sister? She never even mentioned it. And it go, it just turns out that um, Shelly just found out that she has sisters through the DNA test that Monica took for relative race. Yeah. So she's 62 years old and just found out that she has sisters. And, that's the second time Monica's DNA has connected, for this show yeah. has connected some other people. Yeah. And it helped other people know that they had, mm-hmm. you know, another brother or another cousin. A whole nother family um, out there. Out there that they didn't know about. And that's what's good about getting tested, you know, for DNA. Right. And um, I- through whatever resource you want to use. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it could connect people. So all it does is. All it does is take two people mm-hmm. to take the test and they connect. And now you got whole, whole families yep. to come together. And um, Relative Race was able to bring um, Monica's bio mom to Aunt Shelley's house. And they met for the first time um, while they were there. So Monica was actually able to introduce them to each other. So that was really special. Yep, that was good. Um, and then uh, Team Black. So... This was one of Sean's um, relatives, Mm -hmm. uh, which is good. I'm glad he was able to get a couple of people during the show. But uh, so he met his cousin on his dad's side, Mm -hmm. which he didn't know a whole lot about. So um, her name was uh, Gavin. 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 And uh, and so she and her son um, met them at the door and uh, comes to find out that they do uh, some people call it D&D, but Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, and Sean has played it before. Mm-hmm. And so they already have something in common. in common. I will say that her son tricked me for a minute because he has red hair. And so at first I thought they were going to say that they were Casey's relative because of his hair. But Didn't he call himself a nerd? He did. Yeah. He, he, he did. He was dressed like people <laughs> he had on a call suit him with, a nerd. He, he had, had on, on a suit and a bow tie. tie. Yeah. Which... You know, I wouldn't necessarily associate no. that with the nerd because I'll, I'll you wear bust out a bow tie any day. Yeah. So. Um, but she also was able to show um, Sean pictures of their um, great grandparents that they share um, from 1874. She had like the original. I don't know. I think they were the original pictures. Yeah, because they was wearing gloves. Yeah. And I would imagine... The oil from mm-hmm. our fingers and our skin yeah. would probably damage. Yeah, and they kept saying pictures. these should be in museums um, because they're so old. So I thought that was really cool that she still had information like that and photos like that. Yeah, I really hope she has a way to store those, you know, the properly mm-hmm. and that they don't get damaged over, yeah. over time. They look so, really good. Yeah, they did. Um, so we're down to Team Blue. Mm-hmm. Now, we, everybody... <laughs> Who watches Relative Race has been saying every week, we hope, hope. they meet their mother we hope. next week. We hope they meet their mother this week. And so, Trisha, who did they meet this week? They met their mom. Finally. Finally. <laughs> they met their mother, Ruth. Yeah. I was worried that they weren't, they were going to meet another cousin, cousin or, or another sister yeah. or something. And that may be because they've talked about her, you know, mental illness. Yeah. That maybe she just wasn't, um, you know, well, well enough, enough to, to do the show. Do the show, or maybe she didn't want to because she was maybe ashamed or whatever the case may be. I'm just so happy that I'm were. glad they did. I'm so happy that they met. And I, you know, on one hand, it makes for really good TV that it was on day nine. But on the other hand, I'm like, uh, couldn't they have redone the route? <laughs> they could have met her earlier. They very well could have, but they kept that for day nine on, for a reason. Um, yeah, but in my mind, I'm like, what if they had met to, what if they had made it to day nine? And they wouldn't, they would, I mean, I know they would have well, given them the information, but we wouldn't have 
have seen it. Well, I think they were probably like, you know, saving it as the season went along. And if they got to a point where they thought maybe they wouldn't make it, they would stick to because they were all in Florida. It ain't I mean, like true. They had to go, you know, up to Georgia and back to, you know, it just... Anyway, I yeah. don't know. I'm speculating. Yes, but, but they met anyway, their mom. I'm glad they did. And when I say they just, you know, it it was just as much of a shock to them as it was to her. And she knew that they were coming. But just to be, I'm guessing, just to be able to see her kids and know that they're well, um, they just stood there and stared at each other. Which, I mean, just. They just looked at each other, then they would hug, and then they would just look at each other, and then they would hug, and they didn't really talk that much in the beginning. They were just, it was, they were just so happy to see her, and just, they just stared at her. Yeah, so I'm glad they got a chance to talk to her and let her know that they're good, um, and that they are, you know, there for her Mm -hmm. to assist her in whatever it is that she needed. And uh, I don't know, it was just it was just good to see. Yeah, and so. I think that helped her to know that they are doing fine and that they were OK. Yeah. And that they found her. Yeah, I hope that they've gotten a chance to, you know, since the show has ended to go back and, you know, visit with mm-hmm. her, meet with her. I think they're going to probably try to move to Florida. Yeah, they mentioned that. Which will that. be awesome. Because that's where their family like is. Their whole family is. So, yeah. um, so that'll be good. So good, good, good relatives uh, met um met today so so excited for Uh, all four of those teams Mm -hmm. so very good all right so let's get down to the results what everybody's waiting for this is the part (laughs) i was so nervous i was like yes somebody's getting you know sent home and i didn't want it to be team red because we chose them as our favorites at the beginning of the season. Yes. And then uh, you, the other teams, you just don't want to see a team go go home. But, right. Um, that's the name of the game. That's the way it goes. That's the rules. You know what you signed up for. Yeah. So the winner, which I was a little bit surprised by this, the winner um, coming in first place, what was the time? Um, They were two minutes under their allotted time. And that was? Team Green. Team Green. Congratulations. Congratulations to Team Green. They yeah. they did it. They, and they won the two tickets, the airline tickets, to go back and see um, a relative yep. after the race. They have they been did really good. Except for day one. I'm telling they you, they turned it around. really good this season. I don't know what kind of pep talk they gave each other. I don't know if they had a come to Jesus meeting on day one. I'm not sure. But when I say they did a whole turnaround and they look like a whole new team from day one, I'm telling the truth. Well, day 10, the whole, I don't know what they call it, the the challenge mm-hmm. or whatever they call it, is going to be different, right? It's not driving around and no, finding it's relatives. Different. It's, it's like different. It's like two or three challenges a piece that yeah. they have to compete against each other. So maybe they have some momentum and they're working well together mm-hmm. and, and hopefully that uh, will help them. So but they did better than I thought they were going to do this yeah, season. So yeah, congratulations. Sure. Um, second place um, with what time? Six minutes over. Six minutes over. And I was I was surprised by this because I thought it would be Team Red. I but did too. It was Team Black. Yes. Team Black came in second. Um, even with their traffic issues, they still came in second place. Yep. So good for them. Um, so that means it's down to red and blue. Yep, down to team red and team blue. Um, it was a six minute difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And so the team that came in third place was team red. Yes. Which means team, team blue, blue has to go home. They're going home. Yep. But they they found all of their relatives. They met their mom. They mind. just don't get to compete for fifty thousand dollars. Right. So I think all in all they. I mean, the fact that they met their mom today, I don't think anything can compare to that. So they, you know, basically said that they wanted to make it the nine days to meet all the relatives. And that made them winners. Yep. And winning $50,000, it would have helped them a lot. It Mm -hmm. would have helped them, um, you know, be able to live on their own and get an apartment and all this stuff. But I feel like 
they have so much family mm-hmm. in Florida. I think yeah. every, I think all of them are going to come together and make sure they can get right to Florida to live. I, I feel like that too because I know at least I remember three of their relatives saying that they were saving money to be able to find them. Yeah. So in my mind, that means that they will help them get to Florida. And just think they met some cousins along the way mm-hmm. that were similar in age. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to plan their life, but, <laughs> you know, and try to put people in their right. house. But And they I met mean, their brother, too. They, so Yeah, I mean, they could live together I for mean, a while. get on their feet. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I feel like they're going to end up in Florida and it's all going to oh, be yeah. great. Um, and even Team Red, Devin said that he already has, you know, ideas about some um sus, sus, what did he say some programs programs that will be able to help them relocate and you know get back on their feet and you know live a better life so i feel like and with the relative race family and you know all the fans of the relative race i feel like they're going to be okay yeah oh yeah for sure for sure so so very good episode yes I, next episode will be totally different yep. they're not meeting a relative it's all challenges. It's all it's, challenges. Yeah, and so, I feel I feel like there's gonna be some funny stuff that happens. Oh yeah. There's gonna be some fights. Yes. <laughs> there's gonna be some disagreements. There's gonna be some side eyes. Yep. And it's, somebody's gonna win fifty thousand. The only thing I don't want to see is war paint. So we're really rooting for <laughs> Team Red. Yes. Um, good luck to all the teams. Yes. But come on, Team That's Red. Who we going Liz, for? Liz, Devin, y'all go ahead yeah. and pull it out. Okay. All right, so if you enjoyed the podcast, uh, we love for you to subscribe on whatever platform you get your podcast. All of our social media information is in the episode notes. So give a, give us a follow on those. And until next time, we are gone. Yes. Have a good one, y'all. Thanks. Bye.